Hi, today we are going to tell you about the Boston Tea Party, don't forget to subscribe and put likes, enjoy listening. The Boston Tea Party of 1773 stands as one of the most iconic and impactful events in American history. This audacious act of protest against British colonial rule marked a pivotal moment in the lead-up to the American Revolution. Rooted in tensions surrounding taxation without representation and the quest for independence, the Boston Tea Party was a manifestation of colonial anger and resistance. In this detailed account, we will delve into the circumstances leading to the event, the key players involved, the dramatic unfolding of the protest, and its far-reaching consequences on the road to American independence. The Navigation Acts and Taxation The Boston Tea Party, that iconic moment in American history, finds its roots in a complex web of events and policies that span decades. To truly understand the significance of this event, one must journey back to the late 17th century, when the British Crown laid the foundation for what would later become a pivotal act of protest against colonial rule. At the heart of this historical narrative are the Navigation Acts, a series of laws that were designed to regulate trade within the vast expanse of the British Empire. These acts, initiated in the mid-17th century, marked the beginning of a system of imperial control over colonial commerce that would prove to be a source of growing tension between the American colonies and the British Crown. The Navigation Acts, in their essence, were economic policies aimed at securing British dominance in global trade. They mandated that all trade between the American colonies and the rest of the world had to be conducted on British ships. Additionally, certain key commodities, including tobacco and sugar, were required to be shipped directly to England before they could be re-exported, a measure that ensured British merchants a significant share of colonial trade profits. However, it was not until the aftermath of the French and Indian War, which concluded in 1763, that the Navigation Acts began to be enforced more stringently in the American colonies. The cost of defending the colonies during this conflict had imposed a considerable financial burden on the British government. To alleviate this burden and to maintain a British military presence in North America, the British Crown sought to extract more revenue from the colonies. One of the initial measures employed to generate revenue was the Sugar Act of 1764. This legislation aimed to impose duties on a variety of imported goods including sugar and molasses, which were pivotal to the economies of many American colonies. The act also contained provisions that bolstered customs enforcement and established vice admiralty courts to try alleged smugglers. This incursion into colonial economic affairs, coupled with the fact that the colonies had no direct representation in the British Parliament to voice their concerns, ignited a spark of discontent. The discontent over the Sugar Act was followed by the infamous Stamp Act of 1765. This act required that a wide range of legal documents, newspapers, and even playing cards carry a revenue stamp, which had to be purchased with British currency. Again, the fundamental issue of taxation without representation reared its head, as the colonists had no say in the imposition of these taxes. The Stamp Act, more than the Sugar Act, became a focal point for colonial resistance, it sparked widespread protests, boycotts, and the convening of the Stamp Act Congress, which brought together representatives from nine colonies to coordinate opposition to the tax. The famous rallying cry of no taxation without representation echoed throughout the American colonies, signifying the deep-seated resentment that was brewing against British taxation policies. Taxation without representation a fundamental principle of the American Revolution, and indeed one of its most resonant slogans, was the cry of no taxation without representation. This powerful declaration encapsulated a central grievance of the American colonists against British rule, a grievance rooted in the profound issue of taxation without the consent of the governed. The concept of taxation without representation harkens back to the very foundations of democratic thought and political philosophy. It is a principle that had been debated and articulated by Enlightenment thinkers like John Locke and Baron de Montesquieu, 
who argued that legitimate government derives its authority from the consent of the governed. In essence, for government to impose taxes upon a population, it was widely believed that the taxed individuals or entities should have a voice in the decision-making process, ideally through elected representatives. However, this fundamental principle was conspicuously absent in the relationship between the American colonies and the British crown. The American colonists, while they considered themselves loyal subjects of the British Empire, had no direct representation in the British Parliament, which resided thousands of miles away across the Atlantic Ocean. This geographical and political gulf meant that the colonists were subject to decisions made by a government in which they had no say. The issue of taxation without representation came to the fore with the intensification of British efforts to extract revenue from the American colonies in the aftermath of the French and Indian War. This conflict, which had pitted the British and their American colonists against the French and their Native American allies, had left the British government with a considerable debt. To cover the cost of maintaining a military presence in North America and to offset the expenses incurred during the war, the British Crown sought to extract more revenue from the colonies. The Sugar Act of 1764, the first in a series of revenue-raising measures, marked a notable turning point. It imposed duties on sugar and molasses imported into the colonies, commodities that were essential to many colonial economies, particularly in the Caribbean. More significantly, it signaled a departure from the traditional policy of salutary neglect in which British authorities had turned a blind eye to colonial trade violations. The Sugar Act was followed by the Stamp Act of 1765, which imposed taxes on a range of paper goods. What made these taxes particularly irksome to the colonists was the fact that they were imposed without any colonial representation in the British Parliament. The colonial perspective was clear. They were being taxed by a distant authority in which they had no voice, no elected representatives to advocate for their interests, and no say in the decisions that directly affected their lives and livelihoods. This frustration with taxation without representation was not merely an economic matter, but a deeply political and philosophical one. The colonists saw their rights as Englishmen being violated, and they argued that such actions by the British government were tyrannical and unjust. The rallying cry of no taxation without representation echoed throughout the American colonies, serving as a unifying principle that galvanized resistance against British policies. The East India Company. The Tea Act of 1773, a pivotal moment in the lead up to the American Revolution, holds a special place in history as a catalyst for colonial unrest. At its core, this legislation granted the British East India Company a near monopoly on the tea trade within the American colonies. However, the Tea Act was far from a simple economic policy. It represented a deeply significant political and economic maneuver by the British government. To fully grasp the implications of the Tea Act, it is essential to understand the context in which it emerged. By the early 1770s, Tensions between the American colonies and the British Crown had reached a boiling point. The American colonists were increasingly resentful of British policies, particularly those related to taxation and trade regulations. The East India Company, a powerful entity in its own right, was facing dire financial straits. This British trading company had played a significant role in shaping the economic landscape of the British Empire and the American colonies. It had a substantial presence in India and was a major player in the global trade of various commodities, including tea. One of the company's chief assets was its dominance in the tea trade. British merchants considered it a prized possession, and tea was a highly sought-after commodity in the American colonies. However, the East India Company found itself facing a severe crisis. It had accumulated a massive surplus of tea in its British warehouses, largely due to a shift in consumer preferences towards smuggled Dutch tea and the refusal of American colonists to purchase taxed tea. This surplus posed a significant financial threat to the company, potentially leading to its collapse. In response to the East India Company's dire situation, the British government devised a plan to salvage the company and, in the process, reassert control over the tea trade in the American colonies. 
The T Act of 1773 was born out of this necessity. Under the terms of the Tea Act, the British East India Company was granted exclusive rights to export its surplus tea directly to the American colonies. The company was also given the authority to appoint colonial merchants as consignees to receive and sell the tea. Importantly, the tea sold under this arrangement would be exempt from the import duties that had previously been imposed on it. In essence, the Tea Act made British tea more affordable than smuggled Dutch tea. On the surface, this might seem like a financial lifeline for the East India Company, but it had far-reaching political implications. The colonists saw this act as a blatant attempt by the British government to enforce its authority and control over their economic affairs. To them, it was not merely an economic policy, it was an extension of the broader struggle for colonial rights and representation. They viewed it as yet another instance of taxation without representation, as they had no say in this policy, which directly impacted their daily lives and commerce. Moreover, the selection of consignees for the tea distribution was seen as a direct challenge to colonial autonomy. It bypassed colonial merchants, effectively sidelining local business interests in favor of those appointed by the British government. This undermined the colonists' sense of self-governance and local control over trade. Resistance in Boston The Tea Act of 1773, a legislative maneuver by the British government, was met with vehement opposition in the American colonies, particularly in the city of Boston. The story of resistance in Boston serves as a microcosm of the broader colonial discontent that would culminate in the Boston Tea Party and, ultimately, the American Revolution. The epicenter of this resistance in Boston was the group known as the Sons of Liberty, a secret society founded by American colonists to protest British policies and advance the cause of colonial rights. Samuel Adams, a prominent Bostonian and fiery advocate for colonial independence, emerged as a leading figure within this organization. Adams and his fellow Sons of Liberty became the vanguard of opposition to the Tea Act. The core issue at stake in Boston, as in the rest of the colonies, was the principle of taxation without representation. The Tea Act had granted the British East India Company a monopoly on tea sales in America and allowed them to sell tea directly to the colonies without the usual import duties. While this made British tea cheaper than smuggled Dutch tea, it was still viewed as a violation of the principle that colonists should not be taxed by a government in which they had no representation. The response in Boston was swift and determined. The Sons of Liberty, with Samuel Adams at the helm, organized rallies and protests to voice their opposition to the Tea Act. The Old South Meeting House in Boston became a gathering place for these protests. It was here that impassioned colonists, including many tradesmen and laborers, came together to discuss and plan their resistance to the British policies. One of the most notable gatherings at the Old South Meeting House occurred on November 29, 1773, when thousands of Bostonians convened to discuss the fate of the tea shipments arriving in Boston Harbor. Samuel Adams delivered a stirring speech in which he urged the colonists not to allow the tea to be unloaded or sold. This event marked a crucial turning point as it demonstrated the depth of colonial resolve and the willingness of Bostonians to take collective action. Boycotts were another key aspect of the resistance. Colonists, not just in Boston but throughout the colonies, rejected the notion of purchasing tax tea. Instead, they continued to smuggle Dutch tea and sought out other untaxed alternatives. This widespread boycott of British tea had significant economic ramifications as it threatened the financial viability of the British East India Company and, by extension, the British government's revenue collection efforts. In December 1773, three ships, the Dartmouth, the Eleanor, and the Beaver, carrying British tea arrived in Boston Harbor. The Sons of Liberty, determined to prevent the tea from being landed and sold, adopted a direct action approach. They donned disguises, often resembling Native Americans, to conceal their identities and to send a symbolic message of resistance to British authority. On the evening of December 16, 1773, a group of colonists boarded these ships. 
In a meticulously organized and disciplined manner, they proceeded to destroy 342 chests of British tea by throwing it into the harbor. Importantly, while they carried out this act of defiance, they avoided vandalizing any other property on the ships, underscoring their commitment to a symbolic protest rather than indiscriminate destruction. Preparations and Disguises In the annals of American history, the events leading up to the Boston Tea Party on the fateful evening of December 16, 1773, are imbued with drama and significance. It was a moment when the simmering tensions between the American colonists and the British Crown reached a critical point, and a group of colonists, known as the Mohawks, stood poised to take a bold and audacious action that would echo through the ages. As the political climate in the American colonies became increasingly charged in the wake of the Tea Act of 1773, a group of colonists in Boston recognized the need for a direct and decisive response. These individuals, many of whom were members of the Sons of Liberty, understood that the time had come to protest British oppression in a way that would capture the attention of both the colonial population and the British authorities. One crucial aspect of their preparations was the adoption of disguises. These colonists, committed to carrying out their protest without revealing their identities, chose to attire themselves as Mohawk Indians. This choice of disguise was not arbitrary, it was laden with symbolism. By emulating Native Americans, a group perceived as outside the authority and control of the British Crown, they were sending a potent message. They were acting as free and independent individuals, standing against tyranny. The decision to disguise themselves was not just a matter of practicality, but a deliberate act of political theater. It allowed these colonists to operate in relative anonymity while also making a statement about their resistance to British rule. Their attire not only concealed their identities, but also underscored their commitment to the cause of colonial rights and self-determination. On the evening of December 16, 1773, approximately 50 to 60 of these disguised colonists gathered at the Old South Meeting House in Boston. This historic meeting place had been a hub for political discourse and protest in the years leading up to the American Revolution. On this particular night, it served as the staging ground for an act of defiance that would capture the attention of the world. Among those present were prominent figures in colonial society, including Paul Revere and John Hancock. These men were not mere bystanders. They were active participants in the unfolding drama. Their presence added weight and significance to the proceedings. It demonstrated that this was not merely an act of rebellion by anonymous individuals, but a concerted effort by respected members of the community. The colonists gathered at the Old South Meeting House were there for a purpose. They were not just protesting the Tea Act, they were challenging the very principles of British rule and taxation without representation. Their actions were a declaration of their determination to resist oppression and a testament to their belief in the principles of self-governance and individual liberty. As they left the Meeting House that fateful night, these Mohawks embarked on a mission that would go down in history. They made their way to Boston Harbor, where they would board three British ships, the Dartmouth, the Eleanor, and the Beaver, and carry out an act of protest that would become legendary, the Boston Tea Party. The Destruction of Tea The night of December 16, 1773, witnessed one of the most iconic acts of protest in American history the Boston Tea Party. Disguised as Mohawks to conceal their identities, a group of American colonists converged on Boston Harbor with a resolute purpose, to send an unmistakable message to the British Crown and its policies of taxation without representation. Their target that night were three British ships, the Dartmouth, the Eleanor, and the Beaver. These vessels carried a cargo that was at the heart of the colonial dispute, British tea. The Tea Act of 1773 had granted the British East India Company a monopoly on tea sales in the American colonies, and these ships were laden with 342 chests of that tea. 
The act of destruction that unfolded on those ships was meticulously planned and executed with a remarkable degree of discipline. The participants, many of whom were members of the Sons of Liberty and had met earlier at the Old South Meeting House, were not merely vandals. They were individuals who had carefully considered the implications of their actions and were determined to make a powerful statement of protest. Boarding the ships in the cover of night, the colonists acted swiftly and efficiently. Their attire as Mohawks, while serving to conceal their identities, also carried symbolic weight. By emulating Native Americans, who were perceived as outside the authority of the British Crown, they were symbolizing their resistance as an assertion of American independence. The destruction of the tea itself was methodical. The chests of tea, each weighing approximately 340 pounds, were stacked on the ship's decks. Working in an organized manner, the colonists used axes and other implements to break open the chests. The loose tea was then dumped into Boston Harbor. The destruction of 342 chests of tea was not a trivial act. In terms of value, this amounted to thousands of pounds sterling, a substantial sum by the standards of the time. Importantly, this was not a random act of destruction. The colonists were not interested in plunder or personal gain. Their goal was to send a clear message to the British government. They would not accept British taxation without representation. What makes the Boston Tea Party even more remarkable is what the participants did not do. Despite the intensity of their protest, they refrained from vandalizing any other property on the ships. This deliberate restraint underlined the fact that their target was not private property or innocent bystanders, but a specific symbol of British authority the tax tea. The aftermath of the Boston Tea Party was swift and severe. The British government responded with the passage of the Coercive Acts, known to the colonists as the Intolerable Acts, which were designed to punish Boston and suppress colonial resistance. The port of Boston was closed, self-governance in Massachusetts was curtailed, and British troops were quartered in private homes. However, the legacy of the Boston Tea Party was profound. It galvanized colonial sentiment against British oppression and became a rallying cry for those advocating for independence. It symbolized the American colonists' unwavering commitment to their principles of self-governance and representation. British Reaction The aftermath of the Boston Tea Party, a defiant act of protest by American colonists against British taxation without representation, triggered a series of swift and punitive responses from the British government. In 1774, the British Parliament passed a set of laws known as the Coercive Acts, or as the American colonists referred to them, the Intolerable Acts. These measures were designed to assert British authority, punish Boston for its role in the Tea Party, and suppress colonial resistance. The coercive acts would prove to be a catalyst for further colonial unity and the intensification of hostilities that would lead to the American Revolution. The first and most significant of the coercive acts was the Boston Port Act. It was a direct response to the destruction of the tea in Boston Harbor and aimed to cripple the city's economy as punishment. Under this act, the Port of Boston was closed to all commercial shipping until the East India Company was compensated for its losses resulting from the Boston Tea Party. This had severe economic consequences for Bostonians, as the port was a lifeline for trade and commerce in the city. The second of the coercive acts was the Massachusetts Government Act. This act fundamentally altered the system of self-governance in Massachusetts. It annulled the Massachusetts Charter of 1691, which had granted the colony a significant degree of self-rule. Instead, the act placed Massachusetts under direct British control. The governor was given the authority to appoint members of the executive council. Traditionally, an elected body and town meetings were severely restricted. This effectively centralized power in the hands of the British appointed governor and diminished the role of the colonial legislature. The Administration of Justice Act, another component of the coercive acts, was often referred to as the Murder Act by the colonists. This act allowed British officials accused of committing crimes while enforcing British laws to be tried in England 
or another colony, rather than facing a potentially hostile colonial jury. The colonists saw this as a way to shield British officials from accountability for their actions and viewed it as a grave injustice. The Fourth Act was the Quartering Act of 1774. This act required colonial governments to provide housing and supplies to British troops stationed in the colonies. While not entirely new, as a similar act had been passed in 1765, this reinforced the presence of British troops in the colonies, which was deeply resented by the colonists. The Quartering Act was seen as an additional measure to suppress colonial opposition. The coercive acts collectively sought to make an example of Boston and assert British authority over the American colonies. However, rather than quelling colonial unrest, these punitive measures had the opposite effect. They served as a unifying force, galvanizing the other American colonies in support of Boston. The First Continental Congress convened in Philadelphia in September 1774 to respond to the coercive acts and to coordinate resistance efforts. In addition to the economic hardships imposed by the Boston Port Act, the Massachusetts Government Act's dismantling of self-governance struck a chord with many colonists. They saw it as an affront to their rights and liberties. The Administration of Justice Act raised concerns about the erosion of colonial legal rights, and the Quartering Act exacerbated tensions by increasing the presence of British troops. Colonist Solidarity The Boston Tea Party of 1773, with its dramatic destruction of British tea and the harsh British response through the coercive acts, served as a transformative moment in colonial history. Far from an isolated act of protest, it became a catalyst for a newfound sense of colonial solidarity and cooperation. This unity among the American colonies would ultimately lay the groundwork for the organized resistance that culminated in the American Revolution. The response to the Boston Tea Party was swift and intense. Boston found itself under the harsh provisions of the Boston Port Act, which closed its port to all commercial trade until reparations were made to the British East India Company. The Massachusetts Government Act dismantled the colony's self-governance, and the other coercive acts threatened the rights and liberties of all American colonists. In Boston and beyond, the message was clear. British authority was tightening its grip. However, the response from the other American colonies was equally clear and marked a significant shift in colonial attitudes. Instead of viewing the Boston Tea Party as a local issue, they recognized it as an attack on colonial rights and liberties as a whole. As news of the Boston Port Act and the other coercive acts reached the colonies, a wave of sympathy and outrage spread. Colonial solidarity began to take shape in various forms. One of the most tangible expressions of this solidarity was the outpouring of support for Boston from other colonies. Supplies, including food and goods, were sent to aid the beleaguered city. This assistance was not merely practical but symbolic, signifying the colony's shared sense of purpose and their commitment to standing together against British oppression. The significance of this solidarity was perhaps most evident in the convening of the First Continental Congress in 1774. This gathering in Philadelphia brought together representatives from 12 of the 13 American colonies Georgia declined to attend. The Congress was a direct response to the coercive acts and aimed to coordinate a unified colonial response. Delegates to the First Continental Congress included prominent figures like John Adams, Samuel Adams, George Washington, Patrick Henry, and Peyton Randolph. These men, representing a broad spectrum of colonial interests and regions, recognized the urgency of the situation and the need to act collectively. They deliberated on a range of issues, including the colonial response to the coercive acts, the rights of the colonies, and the possibility of economic sanctions against Britain. The First Continental Congress also issued a series of resolutions and petitions, most notably the Suffolk Resolves and the Declaration of Rights and Grievances. These documents articulated the grievances of the colonies and their commitment to non-importation, non-exportation, and non-consumption of British goods until their rights were recognized. They also called for the repeal of the course of acts. In addition to these resolutions, the Congress established the Continental Association, 
which organized boycotts of British goods and outlined a system of oversight and enforcement. This marked a significant step toward colonial self-governance and cooperation in the face of British oppression. The First Continental Congress adjourned in October 1774, but its significance was profound. It represented a tangible manifestation of colonial solidarity and the beginning of organized resistance against British rule. It laid the groundwork for future cooperation and collaboration among the American colonies, which would prove crucial in the years that followed. Shaping Revolutionary Sentiment The Boston Tea Party of December 16, 1773, stands as a defining and iconic moment in the lead-up to the American Revolution. This audacious act of protest, marked by the symbolic destruction of British tea, carry profound implications that rippled through the American colonies and solidified the resolve of colonial inhabitants against British oppression. It became not only a symbol of resistance, but a rallying cry for those advocating for independence. The Boston Tea Party was not an isolated incident, but the culmination of years of mounting tensions between the American colonies and the British Crown. The seeds of discontent had been sown through a series of acts and policies that curtailed colonial autonomy and subjected the colonists to taxation without representation. The Tea Act of 1773, granting the British East India Company a monopoly on tea sales in the colonies, was the catalyst that set events in motion. In response to the Tea Act, a group of colonists disguised as Mohawks to conceal their identities boarded three British ships, the Dartmouth, the Eleanor, and the Beaver. In a remarkably disciplined and organized manner, they proceeded to destroy 342 chests of British tea by dumping it into Boston Harbor. Importantly, their actions were not motivated by wanton destruction, but by a deliberate and symbolic act of protest. The destruction of the tea sent shockwaves through the American colonies and reverberated across the Atlantic. It represented a bold assertion of colonial rights and a rejection of British authority. The rallying cry of no taxation without representation had evolved from mere words to concrete action. The British response to the Boston Tea Party was swift and severe. The coercive acts aimed at punishing Boston and quelling colonial resistance only served to further galvanize the American colonists. The Boston Port Act closed the city's port, crippling its economy. The Massachusetts Government Act dismantled self-governance in Massachusetts, while the Administration of Justice Act raised concerns about the erosion of colonial legal rights. The Quartering Act reinforced the presence of British troops in the colonies. However, rather than quelling colonial discontent, the coercive acts had the opposite effect. They drove home the message that British authority was tightening its grip on the colonies and that the rights and liberties of the colonists were under threat. Instead of isolating Boston, the acts fostered a sense of colonial solidarity. The outpouring of support for Boston from other American colonies was tangible proof of this newfound unity. Supplies and aid were sent to Boston, symbolizing the colony's shared sense of purpose and their commitment to standing together against British oppression. The culmination of this solidarity was the convening of the First Continental Congress in 1774. This gathering brought together representatives from 12 of the 13 American colonies and marked the beginning of concerted resistance against British rule. Delegates to the Congress articulated colonial grievances and issued resolutions and petitions demanding the repeal of the Course of Acts. The Boston Tea Party, as a symbol of colonial resistance and unity, became a rallying cry for those advocating for independence. It encapsulated the principles of individual liberty, self-governance, and the rejection of tyranny that would define the American Revolution. It served as a reminder that ordinary individuals, when united in purpose, could challenge the mightiest empire on Earth. Symbol of American Resilience the legacy of the Boston Tea Party, an event that unfolded on the cold night of December 16, 1773, continues to resonate as a powerful symbol of American resilience and the unwavering determination of the colonists to resist tyranny. 
Beyond its immediate impact, the Boston Tea Party endures as a testament to the enduring power of civil disobedience as a means of effecting change. At its core, the Boston Tea Party was an act of civil disobedience, a form of nonviolent protest aimed at challenging unjust laws and government policies. The colonists, by destroying British tea as a protest against taxation without representation, were engaging in a deliberate act of defiance against British authority. Their actions were calculated to draw attention to the oppressive nature of British policies and to spark a sense of collective resistance among the American colonies. Civil disobedience, as exemplified by the Boston Tea Party, has a rich history in the struggle for civil rights and liberties. It is rooted in the belief that individuals have a moral obligation to resist unjust laws and that such resistance can be a powerful catalyst for change. This philosophy was articulated by thinkers like Henry David Thoreau and later influenced civil rights leaders such as Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. In the case of the Boston Tea Party, the colonists utilized civil disobedience as a means of asserting their rights and liberties in the face of oppressive British policies. They did not resort to violence or armed rebellion, but rather employed a symbolic act of protest that captured the world's attention. By disguising themselves as Mohawks, they sought to emphasize their identity as free individuals resisting external authority. The destruction of British tea was not an isolated incident, but a deliberate act designed to send a message. It conveyed the colonists' refusal to accept British taxation without representation and their willingness to take a stand against what they perceived as tyranny. It was a bold and audacious assertion of their right to self-governance and their rejection of unjust laws. The legacy of the Boston Tea Party as a symbol of American resilience is rooted in the events that followed. The British response, through the coercive acts, only served to intensify colonial resistance. Far from isolating Boston, the acts unified the American colonies in a shared cause. The outpouring of support for Boston from other colonies and the convening of the First Continental Congress underscored the sense of solidarity that emerged in the wake of the Tea Party. This unity would ultimately set the stage for the American Revolution and the pursuit of independence. The principles of liberty, self-governance, and resistance to oppression that found expression in the Boston Tea Party would become the cornerstones of the American identity. The words, no taxation without representation, and the memory of the Tea Party would continue to inspire generations of Americans in their struggle for civil rights and liberties. In modern times, the legacy of the Boston Tea Party continues to be invoked as a symbol of resistance against injustice and the power of ordinary individuals to effect change. It serves as a reminder that acts of civil disobedience can be a potent force for challenging authority and advocating for social and political transformation. Conclusion The Boston Tea Party of 1773 stands as an indelible moment in history not merely as an act of protest, but as a revolutionary statement that reverberated through the annals of American and British colonial rule. This audacious act of defiance, marked by the symbolic destruction of British tea, was grounded in a profound desire for representation, self-governance, and freedom from oppressive taxation. It did more than punctuate a period of colonial discontent. It galvanized the American colonies transcending regional divisions and fomenting unity against the backdrop of British tyranny. The legacy of the Boston Tea Party endures as a symbol of American independence and the enduring spirit of resistance against injustice. At its core, the Boston Tea Party was a manifestation of a deep-seated colonial grievance, taxation without representation. This principle, distilled into the rallying cry of no taxation without representation, had evolved from a mere slogan into a powerful declaration of the colonists' determination to assert their rights. The British Crown's imposition of taxes and duties on goods, coupled with its disregard for colonial representation in Parliament, struck at the heart of the colonists' sense of justice and autonomy. The Tea Act of 1773, in particular, ignited the fuse of colonial resistance, by granting the British East India Company 
a monopoly on tea sales in the American colonies, it was viewed as a brazen attempt to enforce British authority and control over colonial economic affairs. The colonists, refusing to submit to this act, chose to defy it with a symbolic and dramatic gesture. On the night of December 16, 1773, a group of colonists, dressed as Mohawks to conceal their identities, boarded three British ships, the Dartmouth, the Eleanor, and the Beaver. Their intent was clear, to protest against the Tea Act and taxation without representation. What followed was a meticulously organized and disciplined act of protest. The colonists, using axes and other implements, methodically destroyed 342 chests of British tea, valued at thousands of pounds sterling. Importantly, their actions were marked by a deliberate avoidance of vandalizing any other property, highlighting their commitment to a symbolic protest rather than indiscriminate destruction. The British response to the Boston Tea Party was swift and punitive. The Coercive Acts, passed in 1774, aimed at punishing Boston and quelling colonial resistance. The Boston Port Act closed the city's port, severely impacting its economy. The Massachusetts Government Act dismantled self-governance in the colony, and the Administration of Justice Act raised concerns about the erosion of colonial legal rights. The Quartering Act reinforced the presence of British troops in the colonies. However, the British reaction did not have the intended effect of quelling colonial unrest. Instead, it solidified colonial resolve and fostered a sense of unity among the American colonies. Far from isolating Boston, the coercive acts generated an outpouring of support from other colonies. Supplies and aid were sent to Boston, symbolizing the colony's shared commitment to standing together against British oppression. The culmination of this unity was the convening of the First Continental Congress in 1774, where representatives from 12 of the 13 American colonies came together to coordinate a unified colonial response. This marked the beginning of concerted resistance against British rule and set the stage for future cooperation. The legacy of the Boston Tea Party as a symbol of American resilience is rooted in the events that followed. It remains a testament to the enduring power of civil disobedience as a means of effecting change. The principles of liberty, self-governance, and resistance to oppression that found expression in the Tea Party would become the cornerstones of the American identity. The words, no taxation without representation, and the memory of the Tea Party would continue to inspire generations of Americans in their struggle for civil rights and liberties. In modern times, the legacy of the Boston Tea Party continues to be invoked as a symbol of resistance against injustice and the power of ordinary individuals to effect change. It serves as a reminder that acts of civil disobedience can be a potent force for challenging authority and advocating for social and political transformation. In conclusion, the Boston Tea Party of 1773 was not just an act of protest, but a revolutionary statement that shook the foundations of British colonial rule in America. It embodied the colonists' determination to assert their rights and resist oppression. This audacious act of defiance remains a symbol of American independence and the enduring spirit of resistance against injustice, reminding us that the quest for liberty and representation has been a driving force in the American narrative from its very inception. More information and facts. The cost of the tea. The tea destroyed during the Boston Tea Party was far more than a simple beverage. It represented a valuable cargo of immense economic and political significance. In the context of the 18th century, the worth of this tea, estimated at 10,000 pounds, was nothing short of staggering. This act of protest, while symbolically powerful, was also a devastating financial blow to the British East India Company and the British government, amplifying the impact and gravity of the event. To appreciate the magnitude of this financial loss, it's essential to understand the context of the tea trade in the 18th century. Tea was a highly sought-after commodity, not just in the American colonies but worldwide. It was a symbol of luxury and refinement, enjoyed by people from all walks of life. The British East India Company held a virtual monopoly on the tea trade, 
giving it substantial economic power. The British East India Company was a massive and influential corporation, effectively acting as an extension of British imperial power. It held exclusive rights to trade in the Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia, where the bulk of the world's tea was produced. This monopoly granted the company considerable control over the supply and pricing of tea in the American colonies. However, in the early 1770s, the British East India Company found itself in a precarious financial situation. It had amassed massive stocks of tea that it struggled to sell due to a surplus in British warehouses. To rescue the company from impending bankruptcy, the British government devised a plan, the Tea Act of 1773. The Tea Act allowed the British East India Company to export its surplus tea directly to the American colonies by passing the usual British wholesalers and merchants. This move had several objectives. First, it aimed to reduce the excess tea held in British warehouses. Second, it sought to undercut the price of smuggled Dutch tea and establish British tea as more affordable and attractive to American consumers. Lastly, it was a subtle attempt to assert British authority over colonial trade and taxation. However, the colonists saw through the British government's motives. They recognized that while the tea might be cheaper, it came at the cost of accepting the principle of taxation without representation. The Tea Act was seen as a way to impose British authority and control over colonial affairs, including taxation. The colonists were not willing to compromise their principles for cheaper tea. In response to the Tea Act, a group of colonists, members of the Sons of Liberty and other concerned citizens, gathered at the Boston Harbor on the night of December 16, 1773. Disguised as Mohawks, they boarded the British ships carrying the East India Company's tea cargo. Their objective was clear, to protest against the Tea Act by preventing the unloading and sale of the tea. In a carefully orchestrated act, they destroyed 342 chests of British tea by dumping it into the harbor. The destruction of this tea, valued at 10,000 pounds, was not just a symbolic act. It was a massive financial blow. In today's currency, this sum would be equivalent to millions of dollars. The economic repercussions were felt not only by the British East India Company, but also by the British government, which had a financial stake in the company's success. This act of protest was a calculated risk taken by the colonists. They understood that it would likely provoke a harsh response from the British government, yet they were willing to make this sacrifice to defend their principles of representation and self-governance. The Boston Tea Party, in this context, was not just a symbolic gesture, but a significant and costly act of resistance. The British government responded to the Boston Tea Party with the coercive acts, which aimed to punish Boston and suppress colonial resistance. However, the unintended consequence was the intensification of colonial unity and resistance efforts. The destruction of the tea, once seen as a financial blow, became a rallying cry for those advocating for independence. The Disguises The choice of disguises worn by the participants of the Boston Tea Party, specifically dressing as Mobox, was far from arbitrary. It was a deeply intentional and symbolic act that went beyond mere concealment of identity. These disguises were a deliberate statement about resistance, sovereignty, and the colonists' desire for freedom. By invoking the image of indigenous peoples who were perceived as living outside British control, the colonists underscored their own struggle for autonomy and self-determination. To understand the significance of this choice of disguises, one must first appreciate the historical context of Native American-European relations in the American colonies. Indigenous peoples had inhabited North America for centuries before European settlers arrived. Their societies were diverse, with distinct cultures, languages, and traditions. Many Native American tribes and nations had long established systems of governance and trade. However, as European colonists expanded their presence in North America, conflicts arose over land, resources, and trade. The relationship between Native Americans and Europeans was complex and often marked by tensions, 
as the colonists sought to assert their control over the land and its resources. By the 18th century, when the Boston Tea Party occurred, Native American tribes had become central figures in the colonial imagination. They were often viewed as symbols of both resistance and freedom. This perception was rooted in the fact that many indigenous peoples had successfully resisted European colonization and maintained a degree of autonomy. One of the most famous examples of Native American resistance was the Pontiac's Rebellion, 1763 to 1766, led by the Ottawa leader Pontiac. This widespread uprising against British rule demonstrated that indigenous peoples could organize and resist imperial powers. The rebellion included the famous siege of Fort Detroit and sent shockwaves through the colonies. It's within this historical backdrop that the participants of the Boston Tea Party chose to dress as Mohawks. The Mohawks were part of the Haudenosaunee, or Iroquois Confederacy, a powerful alliance of Native American nations in the northeastern part of North America. The Haudenosaunee had a reputation for both diplomacy and military prowess. They were known for their ability to maintain their independence and negotiate with European powers. The decision to adopt the attire of Mohawks was, therefore, a calculated one. It symbolically aligned the colonists with a group of indigenous peoples who were perceived as living outside British control. By doing so, the participants of the Tea Party were making a statement about their own quest for freedom and self-governance. Additionally, the use of Mohawk disguises had a practical purpose beyond symbolism. It allowed the participants to conceal their identities, making it more difficult for British authorities to identify and apprehend them in the aftermath of the protest. This strategic choice was a testament to the meticulous planning and coordination that went into the Boston Tea Party. The use of Native American disguises during the Boston Tea Party had a profound impact on how the event was perceived and remembered. It transformed a seemingly ordinary act of protest into a powerful symbol of resistance against British authority. The colonists were not merely rejecting British taxation, they were aligning themselves with the spirit of indigenous resistance and the quest for autonomy. Aftermath The immediate aftermath of the Boston Tea Party in December 1773 was marked by both punitive measures imposed by the British government and a remarkable display of colonial unity and resistance. While the coercive acts, also known as the Intolerable Acts, were enacted to punish Boston, British officials sought to apprehend those responsible for the destruction of the tea. However, it is indeed remarkable that very few participants were ever identified or faced legal consequences. This outcome was a testament to the solidarity among the colonists and their determination to protect their own. The Coercive Acts, passed in 1774, were a direct response to the Boston Tea Party. These acts were aimed at making Boston pay for the destroyed tea and at suppressing colonial resistance. The key provisions of the Coercive Acts were as follows. The Boston Port Act. This act closed the port of Boston to all commercial trade until reparations were made to the British East India Company for the destroyed tea. This had severe economic implications for Boston, as the city relied heavily on trade for its livelihood. The Massachusetts Government Act. This act altered the colonial charter of Massachusetts, effectively eliminating self-governance. It vested significant powers in the royal governor and limited the ability of town meetings to convene without official approval. The Administration of Justice Act. This act allowed royal officials accused of capital crimes to be tried in Britain or another colony, rather than in Massachusetts. This raised concerns about the erosion of colonial legal rights and autonomy. The Quartering Act. This act expanded the authority to quarter British troops in private homes, further infringing on colonial liberties. The passage of the Coercive Acts sent a clear message. British authority was tightening its grip on the American colonies, and the rights and liberties of the colonists were under threat. Boston, in particular, was singled out for punishment through the closure of its port. However, instead of quelling colonial unrest, the coercive acts had the opposite effect. They fostered a sense of colonial unity and resistance that extended far beyond Boston. 
Other American colonies recognized the Boston Port Act as a direct threat to colonial liberties and a sign of British oppression. This collective response was exemplified by the outpouring of support for Boston from other colonies. Supplies, including food and goods, were sent to aid the beleaguered city. This assistance was not just practical. It was a symbol of the colony's shared sense of purpose and their commitment to standing together against British oppression. The coercive acts also sparked a broader sense of colonial solidarity. The colonists understood that the fate of one colony was linked to the fate of all. The idea that an injury to one is the concern of all became a guiding principle. This unity would prove crucial in the years that followed as the American colonies moved closer to a path of organized resistance and eventual independence. Remarkably, despite the British government's determination to apprehend and prosecute those responsible for the Boston Tea Party, very few participants were ever identified or faced legal consequences. This outcome is a testament to the remarkable solidarity among the colonists. They closed ranks and protected their own, making it exceedingly difficult for British authorities to bring anyone to justice. Part of the challenge for British officials was the sheer number of individuals involved in the Tea Party, estimated to be around 50 to 60 men. Moreover, the participants had taken precautions to conceal their identities, dressing as Mohawks and acting with a degree of anonymity. This made it nearly impossible for British authorities to definitively identify specific individuals responsible for the destruction of the tea. The failure to apprehend and prosecute Tea Party participants sent a clear message to the British government. The colonists were committed to resisting British authority and were willing to protect those who had taken part in acts of protest. It also emboldened other colonists to consider similar forms of resistance. Impact on other colonies. The Boston Tea Party, while geographically centered in Boston, had a profound and far-reaching impact on the other American colonies. It was not an isolated event, but rather a spark that ignited a broader movement of resistance against British policies and taxation. This event inspired similar acts of protest in other port cities, where colonists, in a coordinated fashion, refused to allow British tea to be unloaded. These collective actions demonstrated the solidarity of the American colonies in their shared struggle against British oppression. To appreciate the extent of the Tea Party's impact on other colonies, it's essential to understand the interconnected nature of colonial society in the 18th century. Although each colony had its distinct character and governance structure, they shared common concerns about British policies and a growing sense of shared identity as Americans. The news of the Boston Tea Party spread rapidly throughout the colonies. While some colonists may have been initially cautious about endorsing such a provocative act, many others recognized the Tea Party as a powerful statement of resistance against British tyranny. The destruction of valuable tea symbolized a rejection of unjust taxation and a willingness to defy British authority. One of the first cities to follow Boston's lead was New York. On April 22, 1774, just a few months after the Boston Tea Party, a group of New Yorkers, dressed as Mohawks like their Boston counterparts, boarded the ship Nancy and threw its cargo of tea into New York Harbor. This action mirrored the Boston event and was similarly aimed at preventing the landing of tax tea. It demonstrated that the spirit of resistance had spread beyond Boston's borders. Philadelphia, another major colonial port city, also joined the protest. On October 16, 1773, several weeks before the Boston Tea Party, the citizens of Philadelphia adopted a resolution to boycott British tea. This was a preemptive act of solidarity with Boston and a clear signal of their willingness to resist British taxation policies. In the wake of the Boston Tea Party, Philadelphia intensified its commitment to resistance, with the committees of correspondence playing a pivotal role in coordinating anti-British efforts. Charleston, South Carolina, likewise took part in the protest against British tea. On December 3, 1773, a group of colonists seized a shipment of tea arriving at Charleston Harbor. Similar to their northern counterparts, they prevented the tea from being unloaded and ultimately threw it into the harbor. 
This act demonstrated that resistance to British policies was not confined to the northern colonies, but was a sentiment shared across the continent. Even smaller towns and communities, often away from major ports, voiced their opposition to British taxation and the Tea Act. Local committees and groups sprang up to coordinate resistance efforts and boycott British tea. This grassroots mobilization was a testament to the widespread anger and determination of the colonists to assert their rights. The coordinated resistance to British tea imports across multiple colonies underscored the unity and solidarity of the American colonies. It sent a powerful message to the British government that the colonists were not isolated in their opposition, but were part of a broader movement. The events in Boston had triggered a domino effect, inspiring acts of protest that spanned the length of the American coastline. These acts of resistance were not without risk. The British government, alarmed by the spread of colonial defiance, sought to quell the protests through punitive measures and military force. However, rather than intimidate the colonists into submission, these actions further galvanized their resolve and deepened their commitment to the cause of independence. In retrospect, the Boston Tea Party was not merely a localized event in Boston's history, but a pivotal moment in the larger narrative of American resistance to British rule. It served as a catalyst for a broader movement, one that transcended colonial boundaries and united the American colonies in a shared struggle for liberty, representation, and self-governance.